Welcome back friends. Welcome to another video tutorial from Shamus Biology. And uh, we've been talking about the NET and AIPMT type of videos as well as uh, the class 11 and class 2 biology video lectures. And we're now talking about the part of reproduction, which is a part of class 12 uh, biology syllabus. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the reproduction and all the different aspects of reproductive biology. So first things first, this portion of the video is about uh, the asexual reproduction and actually at the very beginning the overview of reproductive biology and then the different types of reproduction that we know. So let's begin with it. Now the very first thing that I should tell you is reproductive biology is going to give you an understanding of how different organisms reproduce. Now the first question what is reproduction? Reproduction is a process of generating new offspring from an existing parental offspring. That's the idea uh, of reproduction. That means, you know, uh, what I can uh, write about the reproduction is, you see this term reproduction. This reproduction always work in one simple way. That means continuity. Continuity. So reproduction helps continuing the journey of life. Because what we know, all the organisms that we can see surrounding us, including us, all belong to this idea that we, 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 we are living right now at the end of some day we will die eventually. So all the organisms die but life never ends there. Life continues from one generation to the next generation. So if you imagine yourself the life continued from your grandfather to your father then to you and sooner from you to your son or daughter in future. So this continuity is the idea of reproduction. So every single living organism in planet needs to reproduce to produce number of different offspring or future generations who will carry their characteristics in the future. Now what we mean by this characteristics? Now the characteristics that I just told you, this characters, this characters that needs to be transferred are imprinted in genes of those organisms. What is gene? Gene is a part of the chromosome that is present inside the nucleus of all these eukaryotic organisms. So this is our idea. All the information which is present in one organism will be transferred to the next organism from the parent to the daughter or son organism. That's the idea of reproduction. So keeping that thing in our mind I told you that the life always continue and the organisms live and die. It births, uh, so the two separate events are there, birth of an organism and death of an organism. So if you imagine uh, taking both of this as a count, like let's say this is the birth and this is the death, then what we can say, this time frame between birth and death, this is known as life span. Life span. This lifespan can be different for different organisms, right? For example, humans, they have a typical lifespan of more than 75 years on average. Now, for example, the same situation if you look for a bee, the lifespan is far less uh, two weeks or even maximum till months. That's the idea for bees. So for different organisms, this lifespan is different. So while this lifespan continues, there are only one, there is only one major job that organism need to do that is to reproduce because here is the organism after the birth it continues its journey throughout the lifespan events and then before death they need to reproduce that means they need to create another organism that's when reproduction comes in right and where exactly they will reproduce when on this lifespan they will produce a new individual that depends on the type of organism that we're dealing with right and that is not only true for animals because i mostly talk about animals here but also the same scenario for plants so plants also have their birth and death and there is a lifespan for the plants and at a particular point of that lifespan they reproduce just like the animals i'm giving example of animals because it's most close to you so you can relate to it uh, more easily so what we can know here that few organisms 
may have a birth or like uh, the reproduction at the early point of their age okay at the very low age they can reproduce and especially those organisms who have very small lifespan they will also reproduce faster because they don't have much time to live now other organisms who have more and broader lifespan can reproduce later at their age for example humans we don't reproduce at the early point normally human being reproduce uh, technically or scientifically speaking depending upon the changes in the uh, in, in our anatomy and development of all the characteristics required for the development comes later of 14 years of age so that is a barrier after that age only human being becomes uh, available for the reproduction but for other cases for example if you take uh, let's say chicken in that case uh, they will reproduce for faster at the early point of their age or if you take uh, a dog they will also reproduce at the early uh, point of their age so it varies extensively for different types of organism and when exactly they are going to reproduce so let's imagine if it's human then obviously the reproduction age begins from one point and then further it can do till a specific point of their age because you know when we talk about reproduction it means recreating another organism and there is a time frame for that as well so once a specific age is reached then this ability to reproduction is also halt or stop that's true for humans not it's not true for any other all the organisms because few organisms get the uh, idea of reproducing throughout till the death of their lifespan but for humans it's not it's only a specific point so we call these two separate points in two separate regions like we call one step where they gain the idea of reproduction is puberty and where they lost the idea of reproduction or the capability of reproduction that is menopause but for the other organisms the concept is different so this was an overview of what is reproduction including human as a core of it now what i intend to say in this particular fragment of this lecture is the types of reproduction that are available the reproductions are different humans reproduce uh, in a much complex way because most of the other organisms they are different way of reproduction we simply can divide a reproduction process into two types asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction so let me write it here the types of reproduction simply asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction asexual reproduction is preliminary model so it is only found for few organisms which are not that much developed while very highly developed organisms like human they follow sexual reproduction path now what is the difference between these two types of reproduction asexual and sexual let's look at that in a moment first let's talk about the asexual reproduction and what about it asexual reproduction is a term because you know ultimately these are reproduction so the idea is to make another copy of that organism that's what we are going to see so let's assume this is an animal let's assume this is an animal with all the necessary uh, portions and materials inside their cell whatever thing you say this is let's say a single cell animal or unicellular animal with the nucleus and all the organelles and other mo uh, other molecules inside the cell now once they will reproduce means they will make identical copies okay so from one they become two but identical to each other this type of reproduction is known as asexual reproduction so in asexual reproduction what happens the offspring looks exactly same with that of the mother exactly the same we sometimes call it the daughter cell which is the offspring and the mother cell which is the parent so here in asexual reproduction parent and the daughter is not only similar but they are exactly the same they are their morphology their genetic behavior is almost they is completely same now the reason behind this is asexual reproduction is a simple split of a cell that's what happens it's far less complex and simple division of a cell so if you imagine this as a single cell 
this cell divides into two cells and now it produces two organisms because the organism contain only one cell so mostly asexual reproduction is a part of unicellular organisms uni means one cellular so one cell organisms are involved in asexual reproduction by simple splitting so this cell start to grow big and then split in half make two identical cells this is a type of asexual reproduction so example of such let me write it down the example of this asexual reproduction is amoeba amoeba can split into two we call them binary fission binary fission of amoeba binary fission means one cell divides into two just what we saw here another example i can give you among eukaryotes there is also example of asexual reproduction because amoeba is a type of prokaryotic organism right why prokaryotic because it's uh, they don't have any membrane bound organelle or nucleus inside but still amoeba can divide into two similarly if you look at here in case of say yeast if you look at yeast yeast can divide into two yeast is a eukaryotic organism but yeast also divides by asexual reproduction how exactly yeast utilize a way which is known as budding let me show you that okay let me show you how yeast make another copy so let's assume this is the structure of yeast okay and let's say this is the nucleus all the other organelles are there okay now what happens the structure of yeast slightly modifies with time what happens the outer membrane of the yeast they start to increase and form what is known as a bud it looks something like this and then slowly it continues to make structures like this so while it continues to make a structure like this we call it formation of formation of a bud and another important thing is that inside the bud they start transferring the cellular components and also the dna and all the materials are slowly transferred the, the genetic materials are slowly transferred inside the bud and then soon what will happen what we get we get this and this right this was the parental cell parent yeast this is the daughter yeast so now you see it makes another copy by this budding so budding is a way for asexual reproduction binary fission or splitting is another way of asexual reproduction uh, that involved in the process now the question is what about the plants what happens to the plants plants utilize the reproduction measures a little differently it's not entirely asexual you can't say it's entirely the sexual reproduction so we call plants reproductive strategy a little different we call them vegetative reproduction most of the times the reproduction strategy is vegetative although there are few types of plants out there who may follow a part of the asexual reproduction but which are very basic and preliminary plants like uh, thallophyta for example okay from bryophyta pteridophyta and gymnosperm angiosperm all of these types of plants they follow uh, the sexual pattern of reproduction which is a little specific and unique known as a vegetative mode of reproduction which we will see in a moment but this type of reproduction is, is mainly seen in case of uh, the preliminary uh, animals and preliminary plants now there are few examples i can tell you regarding uh, this type of reproduction process uh, especially in few cases of the plants where they behave a little bit like uh, this type of asexual reproduction and i'll give you two such examples first example is potato so if you look at potato what you can find let me draw so a potato we what we can see that there are different structures like this in the potato right we call them eye of 
potato this eye of potato you remember one thing once you get this potato if you if you put it into the soil if you plant it into the soil sooner you'll see uh, the tree coming out even without putting it into the soil sometimes you see that green plantlets start coming out from these regions of the potato right because those are the regions from where the potato can grow into another plant so those regions or eye of the potato which we also known as the bud or what we can say the nodes can involve in the process of reproduction in plants similar things you will also see in case of uh, ginger you see the ginger if, if you look at the structure of ginger uh, i don't know how to draw a structure of ginger but it will look something like this right and what you can see in structure of ginger as well you see like there are small root like things coming out from different parts those are nothing but roots but those are not fully formed roots but those are known as adventitious root adventitious roots this adventitious roots and the eye of the potato are the examples of how few plants can reproduce they can produce another plant from this different structures but those are following a separate rule a uh, vegetative reproduction is a different way to reproduce okay so this are vegetative reproduction because you know the reproductive pattern for all the vegetables that we saw they involve in some extra structure that is present in all those vegetables and from those structures they can give rise to the development of a complete plant that's the idea but apart from that most of them are involved in the process of this sexual reproduction so what is the summary of asexual reproduction in asexual reproduction the reproduction is less complex compared to the sexual reproduction and the idea is to generate the daughter cells from the mother cell and the daughter cell looks the same like the mother cell and actually it's exactly the same genetically with the mother cell there is no genetical difference between the daughter cell with the mother cell in asexual reproduction because they are the exact copy so we can sometimes call them the clones the daughter cells as the clones of the mother cell and there are these two ba very basic way of asexual reproduction one is the binary fission example amoeba uh, as well as yeast also involved in binary fission another type is budding formation of a new cell from bud now if you imagine here in budding of yeast we call it budding yeast so while the bud is converted to the cell that cell may grow and and grow in bigger so that may take place growth of the cell bigger but simply this is the way of asexual reproduction okay so if you like this video please hit the like button share this video with your friends and subscribe to my channel to get more and more videos like that